All right, so I'm making some progress here on the board here, day two, or uh, part two. So I got the uh, driver's run. Actually, I'm using a diagram that I got off actually Amazon. Um, one thing I noticed is that this thing didn't actually come with a CD. So last night I was trying to fire up Mach 3 and getting the right DLL file uh, to control this board. So kind of experimenting with that. Um, you know, like when I'm not doing this stuff, I'm just kind of experimenting with the software, trying to figure it out. But all right, so I'm going to try to keep it nice and clean. So I actually have the uh, shrink grab on the individual strands. So in case this ever comes undone, I'll know the, the wires are actually together in bundles going back to the board here. So now i got to wire in the um, the uh, spindle control. So that would be the com is the common ground and the DAC should be the uh, spindle. Zero to ten volt control for this. So actually one of the main reasons I actually upgraded Mach 3 was that I got frustrated trying to get my zero to ten volt the spindle control going with gerbil. I mean actually I got it to work but it just didn't seem as professional as I wanted it. So that's actually why I decided to do all this. Just I wanted a more professional... I wanted to build a bigger CNC using Mach 3, so I wanted to use the... or figure out the software. So, one of the things I want to do with this CNC is build the plates, the aluminum plates to build the bigger CNC. Alright. Um, Alright, so I gotta do that, and I also gotta run a wire back to the... Uh, what's it called? To the... Uh, relay for the coolant. Yeah, this NEMA 23 motor originally came with my Z-axis, that ball screw uh, Z-axis. Um, but the problem is the color code A plus, A minus, for the stepper is all in Chinese, so I think I figured it out. Got like an adapter. Not adapter, but like a translator. So I just gotta match the symbols up. And I kind of did it already, so I know that, you yeah, know, which is like yellow and green and blue here so I'm gonna hook that up. I want to do a stepper test to see if this thing's actually communicating with uh, Mach 3. Alright so I changed my background to the Physics Anonymous uh, package. The guy made a YouTube video about it. it. looks pretty nice. So I'm gonna drive the motor. It actually works. Not very pretty that noisy though. Oh yeah I forgot I gotta check my steps. So I think I'm gonna start off with 16 micro stepping 1 16th. Um, yeah, because the higher you go, I mean, it's giving me... So, so there's a trade-off between resolution. If you're not familiar with micro-stepping, I learned about this in 3D printing. Um, so, with well, 3D printer actually doesn't really matter, because you're not really, you know, generating very much torque. But with CNC, it's all about torque. You know, because you're actually cutting into things. So, the higher the micro-stepping, the less torque you have. So, the trade-off. So, more resolution or more, more torque, one or the other. So, um, yeah, it's the amount of t turns that can go... Per, per revolution, more control you know, as it spins around. All right, so I'm gonna check out the micro steps. I forgot to do that. Check the power too. Right now, I'm actually just running off my test bench power supply, so not even doing the full full 48 volts. But this should do 24 to or 20 volts to 50 volts. So, all right, NEMA 23. And I actually gotta check the current too. <laughs> all right, first ever control with Mach 3. All right, so without this XML file, the pinouts, I, I mean, I got some of the pinouts to work, um, you know, using some other brand of uh, stuff on it. But, you know, with any sort of like Arduino or Marlin 3D printer board or even this board, because this actually runs a 32-bit ARM processor, that I'm trying to enable output 4 here. But the pin configuration of Mach 3, I don't think is correct, because when I enable it, it's not enabling this... Thing. So I believe these are optocouplers right here. So it isolates it. Um, so the, one of the pins off this processor needs to align with the pin configuration on the output, but it's different. I can tell because this number does not match up with what's in, 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 in Mach 3. So it's going to be difficult. I'm, it's going to suck if I have to manually pin this thing out, you know, by looking at you know the, the processor and pin it out that way. But I've done it before, so it's... Uh, yeah, they didn't send you a CD with this thing, and everybody's actually had a lot of the same issues. It just they didn't give you a CD. So, um, God, annoying. So, all right, so I got the relay figured out. I'll take a look. Coolant. Hear the clicking. 
So what that relay does is when I activate it, it sends 110 back to this uh, AC outlet here and that enables this pump right here. My air pump to blow debris out of the uh, cutting channel. Let's do a uh, real test here. So, powered on. Have it hooked up to my bubbler here. We'll do a coolant. Cool, huh? I like actually, it's pick, I don't have to have an air compressor with this thing, so I can take it with me to mess around with it. Let's say at my cabin or whatever. So I can just pick the whole thing up and play with it. Totally self-contained unit. All right, so now I can get the uh, control box mounted. So now that I've actually finished everything in here, I got all the 110s, the mains, 24 volt, uh, that's the 40 volt power supply, so I can wire everything all, all in the way it's supposed to be wired in now. Put the box back up, everything working. Then I have a 12 volt out here, and that's going to be for uh, fan and lights. So if you watch me in my previous videos, I have actually some LED lights that light up the, the cutting area, which are pretty bright. They actually work pretty good. So I need a 12 volt output for that, so that's why I got this buck converter. So the 24 volt feeds the buck converter, and it feeds back 12 volts out. I'm also feeding 12 volts to the uh, relay here too as well. All right, so All right. I got the back cover on now. I think now you guys can kind of understand what I'm doing here. Um, so I'm going to do a test power. Actually, uh, get the USB in there. Not USB. Here it is. USB at the bottom. So I still got to print out the uh, rear case cover. So I've already designed the rear case cover. It's going to have an 80 millimeter fan in the back. I mean, it's kind of sticking out pretty far in the back now, but. I mean, it's like the ultimate 3018 uh, full-blown like uh, Mach 3. Uh, okay, so let's power this on here. All right. So we got 24 volt. We got 48 volt at the uh, the uh, what's it called the uh, spindle spindle controller. Got the three green. On the three drivers. All right, let's go into um, Mach three, reset it. We'll test the coolant. It is weird how it goes. Oh, I had the same issue with my thing where it would shut off USB connectivity. That's usually, uh, but I have an optical isolator now, so it shouldn't be an issue. I'll have to figure that out. Let's see if we can still turn the spindles. Spindle's still working. So that NEMA 23 is going to go to the top and control, control the Z-axis. Um, I'm actually got the solder on. I'm about to take it apart and solder on long new wires, long wires to get through my cable chain here and down. I mean, it's pretty far back now, so um, I might have some issues with the spindle motor here. I might need to mess around with the wires a little bit here. But uh, cool, looking good. All right, that's the end of uh, part two. So, um, next thing I'm going to be working on is the uh, motor control and getting that old dial in Mach 3 and fire up the spindle. Um, that's going to be another challenge, getting the 10 volt here to here. Um, but I just wanted to get everything back on here so I can, you know, I wanted to get the 110 area finished. You know, the main area, and then that way I could actually, the rest of the stuff I can just do right here. It's not a big deal.